Hello. Today, my presentation is on how to use the Medtronic Evolute FX Tower system such that you can streamline your procedural efficiency and reproducibility. So I'm going to show you a few cases and then some data on our overall multi-center experience as well as our own institutional experience. So first, I think the main new feature of the Evolute FX system is the dot markers three millimeters from the inflow. And I'll show you how to use that to optimize your target implant depth. These are my disclosures. So here's an 88 year old female, frail, so with right bundle branch block, non-obstructive CAD, certainly extreme surgical risk. And you can see that on the next slide, the aortic root is very small. The analyst is 63.6 millimeters. So with a 23 Evolute FX, it'll be 13% oversized. But the LVOT is actually smaller. You can see that it's almost 20% oversized. You can see that the aortic root is reasonably within the boundaries of a 23 Evolute FX. You can see that there. And certainly we would do that over a 20 millimeter balloon expandable valve. Access, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. Try leaflet calcific AS. The aortic root angle is reasonable at 46 degrees. There's no significant aortic arch or angulation or tortuosity. So we're going to do a 23 Evolute effects with a right transfemoral approach. We didn't think that it would need to pre-BAV given not severe calcification. And we insert the delivery system at flush point at three o'clock as we customarily do for commercial alignment and deploying about a cuss overlap view. So let me start by showing you here, this is a free cuss view and this is a cuss overlap view. So what we do is that if you don't have a CT to pre determine your uh, CM angle, you can actually do that on fluoroscopy by just injecting the pigtail by placing it in the right cusp. And then after that, you just superimpose the right and left cusp to generate your cusp overlap view, as you've seen here. It's very quick, and you really need to have very minimal contrast. So what you see here is that on the left side, the cusp overlap view, we line up the inflow of the Evolute FX with the pigtail at inflow to inflow, such that when the valve starts to flower, you'll see that the dots will land right at the analyst, even with the parallax, you can see that here. And what we're aiming for is two of the three dots at or just slightly below the analyst, because if you have two of the three dots above the analyst, then you're too aortic and you'll need to recapture to avoid a pop-up. So by seeing this at the cusp of allowed view, you'll be confident that you do not need to recapture given the valve dive minimally uh, with the FX system, and you just need to make sure the dots are not placed too high as a result of the aortic implant to aortic. And you can see that here on the LAO view now, when you swing over to make sure you haven't missed the left, all you need to do is to line up the three dots and the parallax is removed. And you can see that here is certainly a very satisfactory implant depth on both non and left cusp. And when you release it, you can see the depth is much pretty much the same as you expect at 80% deployment. You can see that here, this is a free cusp view showing the C tap at the inner curve of the ascending aorta, suggesting good commercial alignment. And you can see that cusp overlap view, the C tap in fact faces the right side of the screen, again showing cusp overlap and commercial alignment. And you can see that this is a CT floral co registration using Fremencio. And you can actually see that the commissures are way from the quarries and line up very nicely with the native commissures. So corner access should not be a problem. Mild PBL initially, but next day is trivial PBL. You can see that very acceptable gradients, no EKG changes, despite right bundle branch block and the patient went home on post update two on your back monitor. So in summary, with Evolute FX, we find that the depth markers are very helpful in teaching the fellows and trainees and new implanters that during initial deployment, you don't want to imp uh, avoid implanting too high. And how do you do that is that you start with the inflow to pigtail. And as you flower, it have minimal ventricular movement. You just aim for two or three dots and up below the annular plane and annual contact on cusp overlap view, especially when you see parallax at the inflow because otherwise you'll be too high. If two or three dots above the annulus, you definitely need to recapture because of your risk pop out because you're now too aortic. And you can confirm that easily on the LAO view by lining up the three dots to remove the parallax. So we haven't had to recapture much uh, using this technique and our recapture rate certainly has gone down and I'll show you some data later on. 
Our next case actually shows how to use the dot markers and a gentle push forward to avoid or reduce the need to recapture while optimizing target implant depth. And we have been doing this at our own institution for a few years now, and it worked very well. Let me show you, this is a 79-year-old female frail, certainly comorbidities, normal sinus rhythm, high surgical risk. And you can see that here, this patient would fit a 26 millimeter Ebola FX, 18% so oversized by analysts. And again, small LBOT, certainly definitely high risk of potential pop-out if you're not careful, given the 34% oversized by annual perimeter and LBOT. And you can see that very generous sinuses. You can see that here, access can be a little bit challenging with some calcification in the iliac arteries. However, you can see certainly a horizontal root with degree 65 degrees and a tri leaflet aortic valve. You can also see that here, there's a shell of calcium in the ascending aorta, uh, making potentially a higher risk of stroke. So what we're dealing here is, you can see that the septal length is 4.8 millimeters. We have a 26 evolute FX with right femoral approach, small LBLT, horizontal aorta, calcified aorta, certainly not a straightforward case. But what we're gonna do is to avoid post dilatation with a small LBLT, in case you landed the valve a little bit higher, is to do a pre-balloon dilatation with 20 millimeters. And of course, we insert the flush port at three o'clock with the delivery system and deploy the valve at custom of our view. And we're going to aim for implant depth around three millimeters, given the septal length is less than five. So here's again the free cut steel on the left. And then you put the pigtail on the right cut, as I mentioned, and you just swing the C arm over to overlap the right and left to generate a cut overlap view. Very straightforward, minimal contrast needed. You can see with pre BAV. And you can see again here, we deploy the valve inflow to pigtail at the base of the non coronary cuts because the Evola Epic system rarely dive significantly ventricularly, so it's very stable on annular contact and flower. You can see where the non and the right left cusp are. Now here's what you see here. Very interesting, right? So despite we try to do that, you can see actually initially, the inflow is quite high. You can see that it's zero on the non, and this is now the LIO view, and it's just about one mil uh, two millimeters on the left. And so the question is, would you recapture a position deeper because of the small LVOT and risk of pop-out? So typically, most people would say, yeah, you need to recapture and reposition. However, what we discover, you can see that here, the first operator just pushed the catheter forward, and you can see that it actually gained at least two millimeters of depth on the non-cusp without compromising the left cusp, and it did not pivot upward on the left cusp. And you can see that this is an important observation. You can, by lining up the free dots, you don't have any parallax, so you know that you're in the true inflow in terms of the depth assessment. And because of this, we know that if you apply forward tension on the delivery system, you can see the dotted dash red line that it clearly went to the more outer curve and gained the two millimeter depth. So we feel that we do not need to recapture and we should be able to release the valve without risk of pop-up. And sure enough, you can see this is now release, you can see that here, the valve did not go more aortic. In fact, the depth is one and three millimeters here. On the free cusp view, you can see the C tab of the inner curve suggesting good commercial alignment. This is not the cusp overlap view. We do an aortogram here just for illustrative purposes. We don't typically do that routinely. But for this teaching, you can see that the non coronary cusp is two millimeters, as you saw earlier, at 80% before release, after we push the catheter forward, and the left cusp around four millimeters here, on illustration, so you can see the deployment and release are very stable despite a small LBOT and a horizontal root. You can see also that with CT floor co-registration, that has good commercial alignment as well. So no PVL, excellent gradients as you would expect with Evolute system, trivial next day, no EKG changes, patient went home the next day. So what we found with the Evolo FX system, because it's so stable on release, that with the depth marker, it's really helpful during initial deployment so that you avoid implanting too high. So you start with a cut overlap view with the FX inflow at or just above the base of the pigtail, as I mentioned before, relative to the non cusp And you aim for two of the three dots at or below the end of the plane at end of the contact, especially when the inflow is parallax. As I mentioned before, if two of the three dots above the annulus, then your valve is too high and you will risk pop out, and this will be confirmed in the LAO view. Now the step two is just swing to the LAO view and line up the three dot markers to eliminate the inflow parallax and so that you can also assess the LCC depth. 
If the NCC debt appears high and concern about pop-out, as I mentioned in this particular case, upper OM pushes the capital forward to go deeper on the non-cust. And if it does go forward and you gain some debt at the non-cust, then your risk of pop-out should be low. And then you just release the valve as per standard best practices with Evolute system. And we found that this valve technique could really facilitate efficient FX deployment without the need to recapture, even if the implant appear aortic on the non-cust as you saw earlier. So in summary, the three key steps in efficient Evolute FX deployment is start with cuts overlap view, FX inflow, add or just above the base of pigtail of the non, and aim two of the three dots below or at the end of the plane, at the end of the contact, especially when inflow has the parallax. Step two, you string to the LAO and line up the three dot markers to eliminate the inflow parallax and assess the LCC depth. And if you're pleased to result, you can certainly release per standard practice. If not, as I mentioned, you can try to push to be able to see if you can gain some depth on the non cuts so you can avoid the risk of pop out. So the next case I want to show you involves a patient with 85 year old with previous balloon myoplasty bridge of decision. You can certainly extreme surgical risk, large analyst, 84.4 millimeters, so only need a 34 FX valve. You can see a nodular calcium at the analyst, 25.6% oversized, LVLT slightly smaller with 35% oversized, certainly high risk of needing a pacemaker. But you can also see that here, very generous root, try leave the calcific AS, you can see 56 degree aortic root angle, short septal length of 4.3 millimeters. Now this patient had particular torturous access on the right, so we decided to go on the left. And we got a pre-balloon with 23 millimeter true balloon, despite the previous BAV, just so that we can condition the valve better to avoid post dilatation. And of course, we deployed the valve at three plus four at three o'clock and a cuss overlap view. Now, again, you can see that here, the common theme, peg on the right cuss, get the free cuss view, and you can swing over to get the cuss overlap view. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You can actually place another uh, pigtail or J-wire into the left cut and just superimpose the J-wire and the pigtail, and you can get your cut overlap view that way as well. So you can see this is one of our earliest cases, but you can see that the hat marker is actually in the inner curve. Sometimes what we found with ProPlus is that the hat marker becomes in the outer curve as you cross the arch, but clear this did not happen uh, with the FX system in this particular case. So we actually have to bring this back to the descending aorta and rotate the catheter to optimize commercial alignment. Now we no longer do this because we don't need to. We just automatically adjust this if we find this to be case at the descending aorta. You can see that by just rotating the catheter, you rotate the hat marker at the outer curve. And then now when you track the hat marker and the delivery system, it will maintain at the outer curve. Again, we do not need to bring this back and forth anymore. We just look at the descending aorta. If the hat marker is in the outer curve, or center back behind you. If you don't do a steep LAO view, you can just quickly track across the arch and ascending and the analyst, and you can see that the hat marker will be at the optimal orientation. So you can see that here again, this is our first series. So you can see we start a little bit deeper, but actually the valve uh, came up a little bit more aortic as we make annular contact. Uh, but you can see the dots are actually very useful with the uh, deployment depth. And you can see this is the cut overlap view, certainly a very acceptable depth at a 34, and you can see that with the 34 bar, we actually use the Safari wire, not a Lundquist wire. We no longer find Lundquist to be necessary with the 34 valve. And you can see that here with the parallax removed, the dots are very really nicely aligned uh, and, and the depth, and you can see this is the LAO view, obviously you check to make sure you haven't missed the left, and you can see clearly we did not. So it's very easy to see. And so when we release the valve, you can see the depth is very acceptable three and six, it's not like three and eight or two and uh, nine, two and 10 that you may have seen in previous 34 epilogue system. And you can see the C tab at the inner curve as well, confirming good commercial alignment. In fact, you can see the CT floor core registration confirming that as well. And you can see that the commissures are away from the left main and the right corner. So the patient did develop left bundle branch block. However, the patient did go home uneventfully on post up day four. No PVL to worry about, obviously, excellent hemodynamics with the 34 system. So with 34 FX versus Pro Plus, we found that there's reduced discrepancies between non and left cusp and end of the contact and more symmetric firing, even with the safari wire that you saw earlier. Really stable implant, no pivoting on lease, uh, and even with the safari wire, as I mentioned. 
With the left femoral axis, you do have to pay attention that the head marker sometimes may not be in the optimal orientation in the descending aorta when you go to the LAO view. But however, with the FX, you can really easily rotate the delivery catheter from three o'clock, let's say to one o'clock, and you automatically uh, reorient the head marker in an optimal orientation. And then you just track the delivery system across the arch per standard fashion. And like I said, we have now a good coming show alignment. This is a little outdated. We're now over 100 cases. So I want to just in the final part of this talk to talk about our multi-center experience. This was presented in London Valve last November, and now the paper has been submitted. And we actually have expanded the data set now to include over 220 patients. You can see that here. This is all part of the limited market release before commercial launch of the Evolut FX system. And I'm just going to show you some uh, in preliminary data for the first time here. You can see about a third of the patients were low surgical risk. And also, we're not cherry picking patients, 10% have right bundle branch block and 4% have bicuspids. Now, you can see that here, in terms of sheath and wire use, two thirds of the patient got inline sheath directly. But look at the stiff wire 52% or 53% had safari wire, and Lundquist is only around 35%. So it's definitely not 100% like you would expect with Pro Plus. Also, you can see valve in valve is 10.6%. In fact, two patients have TAVR and TAVR done here. You can see that there was one patient did require a second valve. You can see sentinel use. Free dilatation is about over 50%, but post dilatation is very low. And you can see also the recapture rate was quite low, 26%. Now, what's interesting is that we have almost 100% flush for at three o'clock. And when you translate that, almost 100%, the three o'clock flush point maintain the same. And the only time that we need to rotate the catheter is only 2.2%, so much less than I would say Pro Plus. Uh, most of the cases, the head marker in the optimal center front on the cusp of a left view. And you can see that the dot markers are a little bit variable in terms of where it lands. We don't really pay that much attention to that. But what we do pay attention to at the end is where the C-tap is into the commercial alignment. And you can see that here in our series, 96.5% had that commercial alignment. And the depth is also more symmetric, as you see here, in terms of between the non and the left coronary cusp. You can see that the depth stroke and major vascular confirmation rate are very acceptable. Pacemaker rates on 13.3% in its early experience. However, when you exclude the right bundle branch block and 34FX, it's only down to 5.9%. So definitely improvement and 92% of patients go home directly. In terms of PBL, you can see 14.3% of patients had mild PBL. Those one patient were moderate. Uh, and you can see that here at 30 days, uh, hemodynamics is excellent as we expect with the Evolute platform. Now, one thing that we want to look at is comparing with the Pro Plus, how much better it, is it? And we compare with one single center. Uh, you can see that here over 370 patients, you can clearly see that the common show alignment is better from 96, uh, 80% 80 to 96.5%, but also the symmetry of the implant depth on the left side particularly is much better, is shallower. And also with that, it's not that we have to recapture more to achieve that, it's in fact, we actually recapture position less with the FX platform. Now, one thing people say, well, yeah, you have great coming show alignment, but what about how do you overlap the coronary? Because you can have coming show alignment, but if the coronary is still overlap with the commissure, it will still make coronary access difficult. Well, here's just some compelling data here, looking at our own institutional series. You can see that with the left main, the right both, or right one of both, you can see that here, the incidence of severe coronary overlap with the left main went from 14% down to 6%, the right down to 2.4%. There's no coronary overlap with both coronaries at the same time. And you can see from a quarter of the time now with FX to now down to 6%. So clearly this is improvement in terms of getting the commissures away for the coronaries with the FX system. And again, you see the similar uh, observation that you have more symmetric implant depth and reduced recapture rate. So in summary, in terms of the multi-center early experience with limited market release, you can see improved common show alignment, 96.5%, despite only 35% of Lundquist wire use. You can see mild parabolic leak, 14.3%, excellent hemodynamics compared to prior Evolute systems. So I'd like to thank you very much for attention. I hope you find this presentation helpful in terms of the Evolute's FX system, in terms of procedural deployment, and also some of the early data that we've accumulated. Thank you very much for your attention.